Okay, as we start today, please make sure you have your volume one book, as we'll be using that as we go through this new um, start to our new lesson. So our unit is four, it's called functions. We'll be getting to that word in our next video. Um, but today, let's just look at the new essential question, which is, you know, how can we model relationship between different quantities? And we'll be working with that essential question throughout unit four. And we're going to start by answering that question with the idea of a relation. So today we're going to write and graph relations, and we're going to be acquainted with two new words, domain and range. We're going to figure out what those are. Um, when you think of the word relation, we often think about people that are in our families. There's a connection, and that's really what a relation is in math as well. It's a relationship. So the first thing I'd like you to do is please open up your book to page 277. And we just have to kind of get familiar again with the coordinate plane. So on page 277, that vocabulary startup, this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to first write the quadrant numbers. And let's do this in pencil just in case we put something wrong, you can fix it. So the quadrant numbers need to go in these boxes. The next thing, what goes in this box? It's the name of this point right here in the center of these two lines. And then over in this long box, what is this line called? Let's see if you remember that. And this box down here, the long box, what is this line called? And then finally, if you notice this point, they want you to put numbers in here. So what I'd like you to do right now is to take this seriously, pause the video, fill all those in, and we'll come back and see how you did. Okay, so let's start with the numbers. So the word quadrant means four quadrants. So we have these two lines which are called axes. And when we draw those two lines in, it creates four pieces of a plane, P-L-A-N-E, not airplane, but all spelled the same, but not the same idea. So we're dividing this piece of graph paper basically into four quadrants. So my question to you is, where is the first quadrant? And it's not where we would think it would be. It is in the upper right. We often want to start in the upper left. And the reason I believe that this is quadrant one is because it is the all positive quadrant. So a point in this quadrant will have a positive x coordinate and a positive y coordinate. Now here is usually where students make mistakes because we're so used to clockwise, but quadrant two is actually in the upper left, quadrant three is in the lower left, and quadrant four is in the lower right. And you might notice that I just put in weird numbers, and you'll remember that those are called Roman numerals. So they do use Roman numerals to describe the quadrants. So this is not actually a one, it's an I. And two I's represents the number two in Roman numerals. Three I's represents the number three. And then the V represents five. And when you put a one on the left-hand side, that means to take one off the five. So that is the number four. Roman numerals aren't exactly that useful, but I know two places that you have seen them would be the Super Bowl number. And also, if you watch the end of movie credits, they usually put the year the movie was made in Roman numerals, but we really don't use them other than descriptors here and there. All right, so the next thing is, what is this point called in words right here? It has the coordinate zero, zero, and the word begins with O, which is the, did you remember, origin. At any point in time, remember, you can pause the video to kind of fix yours if there's any oopses in there. All right, which axis in, is this? This would be the x-axis. Whoops, sorry, didn't have it positioned right. Let me just fix that. I'm having a little trouble with my mouse here. There we go, sorry. x-axis, and then y to the sky would be the other axis, right? So now what is this point? Remember that in the alphabet, X comes before Y. So the first quadrant is the X coordinate and the second um, coordinate is the Y. And we've done this earlier in the year when we were doing distance formula. We, we remembered how to plot the points. So if we look at this point, you're first going to position on the origin and you ask yourself, do I go left or right to get there? We're going left and we go left negative four, so that would be the first quadrant, uh, excuse me, coordinate. And then I have to go up one, 
to three of the lines, right? I'm going up three blocks, basically. So that would be the coordinate. And if you've ever played the game Battleship, it kind of uses coordinates in there. Uh, finally, identify the X coordinate of this point. And remember, X is always going to come before Y. So the coordinate um, would be the negative five. So that's just to re-familiarize ourselves with the coordinate plane as we go forward talking about relations. And there are all the answers that we just got. All right, so on page 278, a relation is going to connect an X and a Y coordinate, basically. And so far, we will talk about three ways to do that. We will add a fourth after we talk about another word in our next video. But instead of order pairs, connects an X to a Y. So this right here would be called a relation. It has four points in it. I'll come to these words in a second. Um, we could have put those points, same points, in a table. This is called a set of ordered pairs. This is called a table. And then we could also graph them. So if you look at negative 2, 3, 1, 2, 0, negative 1. Oh, by the way, be careful when you're plotting points with 0. That is the one place where students will put them in the wrong place. So instead of putting it down here, they might go to the left. Remember that your first number is left, right. Okay. And then 3, 1. So these are three different ways to show the same relation, connecting a Y coordinate to an X coordinate. So um, I'm gonna introduce you with two more words. Oh, by the way, this is sort of the set notation. So this, instead of doing it vertically, you can do it horizontally. And when we do it horizontally, we put them in the braces. And those braces shout to any mathematician that this is a set of points. Now you're gonna notice there's two little words here, domain, and range. And those might be brand new words for you. Now, first of all, again, in the alphabet, remember that D comes before R. So D is the first word and it will connect to that first coordinate or the X coordinate. So the domain is the set of all X's. So in this case, you see the negative two, the one, the zero, and the three. That would be called the domain of this relation. The range, which is the second, right, comes after D in the alphabet, that R does. It's the second, which is the Y coordinate. And in that case, you see the three, the two, the negative one, and the one. So it's just a name to represent all of the possible outputs or Ys. So domain is all the possible X coordinates, which we're going to uh, equate with the word inputs in a little bit. And the range is all the Y coordinates, all the possible Y coordinates, and it will be the outputs as we move forward. So here are the words domain and range again. The domain of a relation is the set of X coordinates and the range is the set of Y coordinates. Two new words for today. Okay, so if we head back to page 278 in example one, express the relation as a table and a graph and state the domain and range. So the first thing is, you know, we're listing the points instead of horizontally in a table, we're going vertically and we put all the X's and all the Y's. And then we graph the points. And I just need to put out a warning that any book, but especially this one, be careful and read your scale. So notice that each block is two here. So two, six would be two and just watch your scales, okay? So each block is worth two. Now, once we have put it in a table and a graph, when we're talking about domain and range, it's kind of easy to pull it off the table. The domain is all possible X's, which would be the, notice they're putting them in um, uh, increasing order. So the least to the greatest. So negative four, negative three. They didn't put them in the order, the input. The book will do that. I don't grade on that, but just be aware that the book is doing that. So negative four is the smallest, negative three, zero, then two. Now we come over to the range. Something looks a little fishy here because all of a sudden, like one of the numbers is missing. And that's because range is all possible outcomes. So if you have a repeat, you don't show it twice. So it's like what numbers could be y coordinates well negative eight negative four and six you don't have to list the six again it's just all possibilities um set notation is frequently used to express domain and range so if you get a domain in set notation you want to spit it out in set notation notice the braces so this is the set notation for this relation this is the table and this is the graph and domain and range 
Before we go forward, I'm just going to reiterate what I just said, that if you have a relation that has, you know, a repeat, then you would only, either domain or range, you would only list that repeat once because it's just giving the list of all possibilities, not how many times something happens. So it's kind of your turn. You're going to express this relation as a table. So write the numbers in here. Then you're going to make the graph, and then you're going to state the domain and range. And look, I put out kind of a warning over here. Watch your scale. So look here. If that's four, this must be two. Each block is worth two. So if you have an odd point, it's going to be floating. It won't be in the corners, the four corners. So, you know, give it your best shot here and come back when you're ready to check it. Okay, so let's see how you did. Now, did you put negative five and then a two to the right, three, negative one, six, two, one, seven, and did you come over and plot the points? And then we'll look at domain and range. So let me just show you here is our relation in a table. Check yours, make sure it looks good. And here's what I mean when you go to graph. So when you go to graph negative five, it's kind of halfway, and then two would be one block up. Over here, we would start at the origin. Three is going to be kind of in the middle between two and four. Down negative one is going to have him floating in the middle of the block, right? Go back to the origin. Six would be two, four, six. And two would be one block up. And then finally, the number one would be halfway to two. And seven would be in between the six and the eight halfway. And you end up with these sort of floating points. That just is because of the scale. Now, when we go to look at domain, we look at our x values, negative 5, 3, 6, and 1. Notice I just listed them in that order. The book will often list them least to greatest. Uh, actually, no, I did. I'm sorry. I did uh, order them least to greatest. And the range, I didn't put the 2 twice. And that is what a relation is. You can show it three ways. Um, you can also find domain and range. And those words are going to chase us all the way through this unit. So we started today talking about relations, how to show them, and domain and range. Pretty easy stuff. Watch out for those scales, guys, as we start to practice. Um, have a great day. I'll see you soon.